all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Before I begin, I have to say thank you for who you are and who you have helped me become. I could not have done any of this without you. And I appreciate your love and your care and your support. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. Now on to the good Have you ever received a gift and wondered, what am I going to do with this? Or worse yet, received a gift and you didn't know what it was. Maybe it was one of those gifts where you tear off the wrapping paper, turn the box around and look at it, and you look for pictures, and you look for maybe words that will give you a clue, and then you look at the person that gave it to you and say, thank you so much. <laughs> and you set it off to the side saying, I'll figure it out later. If you have children, or had children, or know of any children, you might have experienced what my kids experienced when they were young. My wife Carol sometimes would buy them a present for Christmas or birthday, sometimes without my knowledge, sometimes with it. And the box would contain those three words that every parent dreads on Christmas Eve. Some assembly required. Amen. As I, as I said, in the interest of full disclosure, sometimes I did it to myself. But in any case, in those instances, I knew what the gift was, my wife knew what the gift was, the kids knew what the gift was. But it required some action on my part so that they could actually use that gift. Well, Welcome to Pentecost. It's on this day of Pentecost that we remember and we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and that it's come to us. The Holy Spirit has not come just to those people that we read about in Scripture. It wasn't to the early church mothers and fathers. And it isn't just a past that we recall fondly. Pentecost is a day to remember that through our baptism, we are the recipients of the gift of the Holy Spirit as well. It is a gift that we continue to receive today because of what happened on that first Pentecost. And all of those people being able to speak all those different languages, we call this the birthday of the church. So yay! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! We received the Holy Spirit! Now what? We did. What is this gift? What does it require? Do we know what to do with it? Is there some assembly required? A week ago, I was fortunate enough at my new parish, St. Peter's in the Great Valley, to go to a vestry retreat where we were talking about different ways to attract more people into the parish. And in the course of the retreat, there was a piece of paper that was put in front of us that stated what, what at least the Diocese of New Jersey says is the mission of the church. And that is to form disciples of Jesus Christ so that they can participate in Christ's mission of reconciliation in the world, relieving, healing, and liberating them from suffering. I'll say that again. To form disciples of Jesus Christ, so that they can participate in Christ's mission of reconciliation in the world, relieving, healing, and liberating them from suffering. That's exactly what those first recipients of the Holy Spirit did. They told others about Christ and about His mission. And 
then they invited them to be a part of it. At this point, you might be thinking a couple of things. The first is, Christmas sounds an awful lot like evangelism. <laughs> Thanks be to God. You're right, it does. We in the Episcopal Church don't use the E word very often. <laughs> We're uncomfortable with it. We think about knocking on doors or standing on the corner passing out tracts to people walking by. And the second thing is you might be thinking is Chris is delusional if he expects me to go door to door to tell people about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But that's not what I'm asking you to do. Although it's not a bad thing. Amen. It's not what I'm asking you to do. I think it's time for us in the church to reclaim the way the early church understood the word evangelism. To bring the good news. To bring the good news, to share the good news, and to join with Jesus Christ in his mission of reconciliation. Reconciliation is at the heart of the scripture. It is at the heart of our worship, and it is at the heart of everything that Jesus did while Jesus was on earth. With the receipt of the Holy Spirit, we, the church, are now the body of Christ in this world, and it is up to us to carry on this mission of relieving healing, and liberating others from suffering. Yes, sometimes that involves going door to door. But there are a myriad of other ways that you can help in this mission. The Spirit comes to each person in a way that is meaningful to both God and that person. St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, that there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And that each gift is used for the common good, for the building up of the church, and to continue the mission of Jesus in the world. It could be teaching in church school. It might be singing in the choir. It might be working the pit at the chicken barbecue. It might be going over to the outreach house and helping serve others or bringing others that you meet to the outreach house to receive the help that they need. There are numerous ministries that you can be a part of in this place and in the world. But how do we make the most of the gift of the Holy Spirit? How do we participate in that ministry of reconciliation? How do we know what we are called to do? Have no fear, this is where we get back to those three wonderful words. Some, assembly, required. We need to pray. We need to continue to, stu to study scripture and explore our faith. We need to worship together in community and share the Eucharist. We need to be in a community of other believers. And when we make mistakes, we need to confess them and return to God. When we do these things, we orient ourselves to the roles that we are to take in the body of Christ. And then once we do those things, once we do those things, we can seek and serve. We can love our neighbors as ourselves, and we can strive for respect and dignity of every human being. If all those things sound familiar, and they should, they're part of our baptismal covenant. They're part of the promises that we make when we renew it, and when we remember that we have received the Holy Spirit. Friends, as we go forth from this place out into the world, think about the gifts of the Holy Spirit that has been given, and the gift that has been given to each one of you, and how that gift might be used for the common good of all people. 
Think about how we can assist Jesus in his mission of reconciling everyone. In whatever way we use these gifts for that purpose, we are evangelizing. We are sharing the good news of God in Jesus Christ. We are participating in and inviting others to participate in relieving, healing, and liberating others from suffering. How will we use the gifts that we're given? How will we evangelize? How will we, in partnership with the Holy Spirit, make a difference in this world?